Hi there, my name is Jason Dewald and I'm the Head of Audio here at the Australian Institute of Music and welcome to AIM TV Sydney. Now this channel has been predominantly uh, featuring our performers on uh, from classical to contemporary um, but we also actually run a number of micro lectures. These are little uh, miniature lectures on various recording techniques, Pro Tools, Reason, those sorts of software things for the audio engineers and music production people amongst you. Today's micro lecture is going to be about drum replacement. So that's after you've recorded some drums, you may want to enhance, enhance those drums with additional sounds. And I'm going to show you a technique that I use that's best suited to do those. We're going to be using MIDI. It's in two parts. It's pretty complicated, but hopefully you'll be able to follow that pretty well. And don't forget to put any comments you like. We're happy to hear from you. Here we go with part one of drum replacement. Okay, so here we go. We've got some a Pro Tools session uh, loaded at the moment. So here's the, the drum kit. So here's the sort of the kick and the snare. Uh, so let's hear it. Okay, so it's been pretty well recorded, but what we're going to do is we're going to use um, uh, some enhancement techniques. So just to put different sounds underneath the kick and the snare that, um, that are you know, realistically kick and snare sounds, but you don't have to use that either. Um, so I'm just going to show you the method that, uh, that I use to do this particular thing. So just putting extra snares and extra kicks underneath this sound to, to kind of enhance it a little bit more. I've um, created a new software instrument track. And I've loaded battery on here at the moment and um, battery is um, it's made by native instruments you don't have to use this anything that can create um, drum sounds is uh, is a great uh, thing to use and that can be fed off via MIDI so we're using MIDI information to feed into battery and depending on what note we play will depend on what sound we're going to actually hit All right. So I'm just playing different MIDI notes at the moment, um, and that's gonna uh, we're gonna feed that those MIDI notes um, into here. Okay. Um, now, so what we do is we're gonna look at the kick drum first. Okay, and we're gonna actually create a MIDI track for this kick drum. I'm gonna actually call it um, Kick Replacer. Okay. And um, because I've created a MIDI track, it knows that I've got battery uh, actually loaded in here. So battery is just going to be chosen now. So I'm going to make this MIDI track actually go to uh, battery now. Okay, now uh, when I've created the MIDI track, I don't want to view clips here. I actually want to view notes. Okay, so I scroll down and I locate the note that is actually going to correspond to the kick. And now I actually know what that is. That's C1 right there, okay, which is cool okay. where that is. So what I'm going to Chris quickly do is I've got my pencil tool out and I'll just zoom that in so you can see a little easier. Oops. Cool, there's C1 right there. And I'm just going to actually just create a with my pencil tool, just write a, a note in there. Okay, now um, that has uh, created just a note that corresponds to the kick drum. So um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to copy that, uh, Command C, okay? And obviously wherever I place the cursor and Command V is where it'll actually uh, put the actual notes now, okay? So just you know, Command V is putting those notes there. Well, I'm just going to delete that for the moment. Okay, now. Um, one other thing you should just uh, be aware of is that when you've got the A to Z button here in this top right hand side, um, you don't have to use the command thing anymore. By actually just pressing V, right, wherever the cursor is, that actually pastes the note for us. Okay, so that's quite uh, a good little shortcut there. We're going to use this shortcut um, quite a lot. So what we need to do is we need to press a button. We need to actually position the cursor right where the kick drum is, then move the cursor down and then paste the note. That's kind of the basic concept of it, okay? Um, but we need to do a shortcut for that, so it's because otherwise it's a little mundane. It's pretty mundane as it is anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I've switched on tab to transients. It's a little button underneath the trimmer here. So when I click this on, when I press the tab key, 
okay you will see that it goes right to where the kick drum starts okay which is very very handy if I go tab again okay it's going to go right to where the next kick drum is okay so that's a really handy shortcut so by just pressing the tab key it looks for the next transient and pushes the um, cursor to that point okay right now that I've got the cursor to that point what I need to do is now move to the next track I need to move the cursor down okay and this is again where this A to Z button comes in because the colon key allows you to do that so it's the one underneath the P key all right on your QWERTY keyboard all right so the colon key just moves the cursor to the next track all right. The P key moves the cursor to the previous track. You can see that's what I'm doing. So I'm just actually moving P and colon. Okay. So it's a combination of this now. Okay. So here's the cursor right underneath the kick drum. I press colon and now I press V to paste my copied note. Okay. And now I'm going to go back up. Okay. And this note is actually quite big, so what I'm going to do is just trim that note a little, okay, and just move it much smaller, like so, and maybe just copy that one too, okay. All right, so go to the press the cursor button, uh, press the tab button, colon to get it underneath, and V. So there is now two MIDI notes corresponding to where the kick drums actually are. Press the P button to go to the top track, press the tab button. To move it to the next transient, press the colon and press V. All right, press P to move it to the previous track, tab. Now you'll notice that when I press the tab, it's found another transient that's clearly not a kick drum there. So we need to press tab again, and that now moves it to the kick drum, colon, V. Previous. Okay, now and then this one and this one. Okay, so let's just see what we've kind of got so far. So I've just put another a couple of kick drums in there. Okay, so I'll just turn up battery so you can actually hear what's kind of going on there. So we've seen now that um, we're actually being able to replace the kick by moving MIDI notes in time with where the actual things are. Okay, now let's just do that with the snare drum, same technique. Okay, so um, again, I'm just going to save where that is. I'm now going to create another MIDI track, and I use different MIDI tracks for my replacer. So now this is called my snare replacer. Okay, and the same technique here. So here's where the chorus starts. Okay, and zoom this out, make sure we're on notes. Okay, and um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to um, position the cursor. Okay, position where the snare drum is. Uh, zoom in a little on this MIDI track. Okay, uh, go colon to move it down and press V. Okay, now what this will do, okay, is it will put actually a note where the kick drum is. So this is actually going to be a kick now. Here. All right. Okay, and make sure that the output of the MIDI track is going to battery. So that's a kick drum. Oops, undo. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'm actually going to move this up. There's a stick it, there's a snare drum. Okay. All right. So that's where um, uh, where the snare drum is. Now that's going to be now the new note that I'm going to copy. So I'm just going to copy that. And uh, in fact, what I also might do is do just make this note even smaller again. Okay, and copy that. And so this is now going to be where my new note is. So tab down again, colon, paste. P for previous, tab across again. It's found the wrong transient here, so we just need to keep going until we actually get to the snare drum. And V. Now, um, people might think that this is kind of a tedious way to go, but you're going to get a lot of flexibility here. And with these programs that sort of allow you to that do it automatically, they're not always 100% accurate, and you always got to kind of go in and check it anyway. So this, for me, is kind of like allowing me to um, do some, uh, making sure that it's kind of pretty accurate here. So I'm just, oops, gone too far. 
tab and there. Okay, so we've got some kicks and we've got some snare drums here. So let's have a listen to where the beginning of the chorus is. And okay. All right, so battery's clearly working here. Okay, I've made it ridiculously loud, but we just... All right. Okay, so we've got... Um, that is sort of as a basic technique for you. Now, we're going to... You might have noticed if you've done this and followed this, we've got some um, a couple other things that we need to just address. So um, that's the basic technique. So we're now going to address um, a couple of the problems uh, that are going to come up. Uh, one of them is this idea of um, a small kick and a large kick here. So we're going to fix that one up in a second. Uh, so hopefully that's been useful for you. And let's go on to part two. So that was part one of drum replacement. I hope you got your head around that. Well, let's move on to part two. Don't forget to subscribe to AMTV Sydney and we'll see you soon.